It was such a beautiful day in the town of Sumray. The birds were singing, the wind chimes were gently ringing, the flowers smelled so fresh and sweet they smelled almost good enough to eat. Algernon and Phil were sitting on a tall, grassy hill, looking out over a cool blue lake. Phil said, boy, I wish I had a slice of chocolate cake. Algernon asked, do you do? I was just thinking the same thing too. Do you know what I also wish? I wish we had hot dogs and corn on the cob. Now that's a tasty dish. Phil said, that certainly does sound tasty too. Can you imagine it? with some of my mum's homemade stew. You know, that gives me an idea, Algernon said. Rather than eating lunch at home, what if we have a picnic instead? Algernon Phil replied, that's one of your best ideas yet. My mum is sure to say yes, I bet. Algernon agreed, it's a beautiful day for it too. We'll invite all our friends and then we'll have quite a crew. How many will that be? Hmm... Let me see. There is Phil and me, Steve, Melissa, Robert and Peggy. Oops, we can't forget about Kevin. Now that makes seven. We will have the picnic right here at this beautiful spot. We can even swim in the lake should we get hot. There will be a great time to be had by all. Listen, Phil, you bring your bat and I'll bring my ball. There will be lots and lots of games to play. Hurry, let's make the plans right away. Phil invited Robert and the others, while Algernon invited all their mothers. Steve said, I know what I'll bring. Giant, cherry-flavoured gelatin shaped like a ring. Melissa brought our most favourite of all sandwiches made with jelly. Robert's mother brought hot dogs that she bought from the deli. Peggy brought some corn on the cob. Oh my goodness, Algernon exclaimed. There is enough food here to feed a mob. Kevin, Phil and Algernon all brought a dessert. There was cake, fruit, and even some delicious pie. What a treat this is, Algernon thought, to be able to eat outside, under the big blue sky. We all met at our special place. After we got everything set up, we had a race. The first race took place in a potato sack. It's only easy to win once you have the knack. There we stood lined up, potato sack to sack. When we got the signal to go, some of us fell forward and the rest of us fell back. The trick is to jump up and down, but to move forward at the same time. To watch the way we tried to play was almost like a crime. You have to pull the potato sack over your legs and up to your waist. You will probably fall down if you hop with too much haste. To watch our race, you couldn't help but to laugh. You know, Algernon chuckled, I feel like a long-necked giraffe. People were falling down all over the place. Didn't think we would ever have a winner in our race. Then finally, someone came jumping in. The winner of our game was Kevin. Kevin said, I feel like a jumping bean. Yeah, Phil laughed. I know what you mean. Next, there was an egg roll race. Peggy said, remember everyone, this takes both skill and grace. Try to get the egg from here to there. Only go fast if you dare. There were two tables that were set up. Everyone was given one egg each, plus an egg holder that looked something like a spoon over a cup. This is what they had to carry the egg in. The holder wasn't very steady because as they ran, they could watch the egg spin. Object of the game is to run with your egg and get it from one table to the other table, but be careful, because your egg is not very stable. Once you reach the table, you have to put the egg in the holder waiting for you there. This must be done with the greatest care. During this time, you must be careful not to let your egg fall flat. Algernon was being just as careful as careful could be until you've guessed it. Just as he reached the second table, his egg fell to play. Algernon didn't win, but that was fine because there were still many games yet to play. Besides, winning wasn't the important thing anyway. Everyone was playing just to have fun. It really didn't matter who won. Next was the rowboat race. At times it was hard to keep up the pace. 
The colours of the boats were red, green and black. The boats had to row from the shore, then out to the middle of the lake and then back. There were going to be two people in each boat. Before they all boarded the boats, they put on their life jackets so that if anything happened to the boats, they would all stay afloat. Melissa was the judge, so she had to stay behind on the shore. It was her job to assign who would ride in each boat at each shore. Melissa declared, In the green boat will go Kevin and Robert. The black boat is for Algernon and Steve. And finally, in the red boat, will go Phil and Peggy. Please board your boats, but don't go until you get the signal from me. Anxiously, they all climbed aboard. They each hoped to win of their final reward. With the oars now securely in place, they were finally ready to go. When Melissa gave the signal, everyone started to row, row, row. They all got off to a fantastic start. Then after that, things seemed to fall apart. For some reason, Phil and Peggy went in circles rather than straight. Phil said, we aren't going to get anywhere, not at this rate. Didn't matter how hard Phil tried to row in circles was the only way their boat would go. The green and black boats were left in the race. The two boats were even, so it was quite a chase. In the black boat, Algernon sat, feverishly rowing. Steve shouted out directions on which way they should be going. In the meantime, Kevin and Robert's green boat came closing in. We're almost at the turnaround point, Algernon beamed with a grin. When we reach that point, I will turn the boat around on a dime. Fine, Steve said, but hurry, we haven't much time. Algernon reached that spot and turned the boat around in no time at all. Kevin and Robert's boat just seemed to stall. They made their turn a little too wide. Their boat seemed to rock from side to side. Stephen Algernon took the lead. It was doubtful the green boat would win, even if they poured on the speed. Stephen Algernon's black boat came zooming in. That's it, cried Steve. We win. Once the race was through, they all stopped for lunch and sipped on some delicious grape-flavoured punch. They sat and ate for what seemed like hours. With their empty cups and plates, they bought forts and towers. Phil said, come on, everyone, and gather around. I have a game called Can You Guess This Sound? This is how you play the game, said Phil. You think of something that makes a sound and make that sound until... Then Robert guessed, until someone guesses what you are, Phil... Did I guess it right so far? Yes, Robert, you guessed it exactly. Now you get to pick who goes first. Who will it be? Robert said, I think I will pick Peggy. Buzz, 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 said Peggy. Steve called out excitedly. Oh, I know what you are. You're a bee. Steve took a turn because he guessed it right. Steve said, this is something you might see or hear at night. Boo, boo, he moaned. Then when he started to talk, he groaned. You are a ghost. Well done, said Algernon, our host. They played and played most of the day away. They played games like baseball, volleyball, and giant steps too. But there was still one thing they had yet to do. Go swimming! Go swimming! Yes, that's the thing. So away they did dash. They wanted to get changed in a flash. They all jumped in the lake. What a big splash they all did make. The sun was still strong and hot. What a delight. Everyone was sitting in the sun to dry. They sat looking up at the white puffy clouds in the sky. Algernon wished this day would never end. But what a better day to spend it than with each one of you who is a special friend. They continued to play until the sun went down. The day is almost through, Melissa said with a frown. Look, the sun is setting, Algernon said. I'm afraid it's true. But there is still something we each can do. What picnic would be complete without a certain special treat? The only hint I'll give is that it's white and sweet. Can you guess what it could possibly be? Let's turn the page and see. Did you guess it was a marshmallow? We would toast them until they are golden yellow. Around the campfire where the children sat, they sang songs about this or that. Does anyone have any story to tell? Steve can tell the story about the witch that cast the spell. They toasted marshmallows and told their stories until the campfire was low. Come on, kids, their mother said. It's time to clean up and go. 
So they all cleaned up and made sure the fire was out. This had to be the best picnic ever. There is just no doubt.